This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Good day. We are coming on the air right now with the sentencing of Michael Cohen. He is the president's former lawyer, Fixer, who pleaded guilty to charges of tax evasion, campaign finance violations that he said he committed at the direction of the president. You see him walking to the courtroom there this morning. He has just received his sentence from federal judge William Pauley. 36 months, three years uh, in prison for the various charges of tax evasion, tax fraud, and campaign finance violations. Want to go straight to our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, who is outside the courthouse. Pierre. Georgia was a dramatic hearing. The judge basically said that Cohen had committed serious crimes, that he had been a officer of the court. He should have known better that while he cooperated, that the crimes that he committed at the direction of the president and the tax uh, violations and the campaign finance violations were serious crimes, George. It's been a dramatic morning. Cohen arrived at court, as you said, with his wife and two children. Uh, in court, he spoke to the judge. He made an impassioned plea uh, to get leniency. He talk talked about how the fact that he wanted to cooperate and try to do the right thing. But Make no mistake, the President of the United States was front and center uh, in this proceeding today. He talked about uh, being in mental incarceration from the moment that he met the President of the United States and that he acknowledged again that he did these acts at the direction of the President of the United States. He also talked about the fact that the President has been tweeting, talking about his situation, calling him a rat, and that he's the most powerful man in the world. But again, George, the judge was having none of it. He believes that. Cohen should do prison time three years in prison. That's true, Pierre. On the other hand, this this 36 month sentence is below the sentencing guidelines. So it, he was taking into account the cooperation that Michael Cohen gave. Absolutely. The special counsel uh, team was here today. They spoke on behalf of uh, Michael Cohen today. They said that he had offered significant cooperation. But George, it's interesting, having covered a lot of these white-collar crimes and these type of things, they, the judges do sometimes give some leeway in terms of leniency uh, to the defendants because of the nature of the crimes. But here, the judge clearly thought that the judge had, uh, that Cohen had lived a life of privilege, a middle-class life, and that, quote, he should have known better. Yeah, he said it was a smorgasbord of crimes and his cooperation does not wipe the slate clean. We're bringing our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, for more on this. And Dan, it was really a tale of two very different sets of prosecutors going before that judge today. You heard from the special counsels, Robert Mueller's uh, counsel, Jeannie Reed, that uh, Cohen provided valuable information. You heard from the Southern District of New York. He didn't come close, anywhere close to assisting this office in an investigation. Yeah, and look, I think this 36-month sentence is a win. Uh, for Michael Cohn, in particular because of what you just said. I mean, the Southern District of New York is coming forward and saying, not only is the sentencing rage 51 to 63 months, but we think he was still lying to us. He still wasn't cooperating with us. He's still making claims in his documents that we think aren't true. But Mueller's team saying, we think he told us the truth. Exactly. And so it seems that here, if, if, when the probation department had recommended 42 months, which was a downward departure from the 51 to 63, the fact that he's now getting 36 months, I think is a win. Keep in mind, in the federal system, that means that he would have to serve at least 85% of that time even with good behavior. I was struck by something else that Jeannie Reed, the special counsel Mueller's uh, attorney, said. She said he provided credible and valuable information regarding, and this is a quote, a quote I had not seen before from the special counsel, any links between a campaign and a foreign government. That shows this whole notion of the special counsel looking at conclusion very, very much alive. Absolutely. You know, I reread uh, through, as I, as I saw that, all of the original documents here that they filed, and in none of them did they make that kind of statement as the special counsel made, that he provided credible and valuable information about any, any links between a campaign and a foreign government. But if he's providing information that's been useful, you would presume that means there were links. And that so, is so this is us reading between the lines here, but it's important and it's significant. And it was a comment made not by the Southern District of New York, but by the prosecutor uh, representing the special And they the said they have counsel. a lot more work to do as well. I want to bring in Lanny Davis, who's worked with Michael Cohen, worked as an attorney for Michael Cohen. Your reaction, Lanny? Well, first, George, uh, Chapter 1 on July 2nd began with your story, where Michael Cohen turned and decided to tell the truth about Donald Trump and own up and take responsibility for his mistakes in representing Trump through the years. We're about to begin chapter two. Today isn't the last chapter. 
Chapter two is Michael Cohen. I'm now serving as an advisor. I no longer need to be an attorney with the sentencing over. Chapter two is Michael Cohen following what Mr. Mueller said, looking at the big picture as opposed to the Southern District, which was just focused on the crimes that they were investigating. We'll be telling the truth, not just to Mr. Mueller and all of his team, 70 hours in seven sessions. He will someday be appearing as a John Dean II generation before a congressional committee and will tell all the truth about what he knows about Donald Trump. That's today's new chapter, and if you will, new headline, that Michael Cohn is now released to tell the full truth after Mr. Mueller makes his findings and issues his report. You will see more of Michael Cohen telling the truth about Donald Trump. Lenny Davis, thanks very much. We should add that the judge also sentenced Cohen to two, to two months for the lying to Congress. That was the charge he ple pleaded guilty to in connection with the Mueller investigation, but that's to be served concurrently with his 36-month sentence, which will begin by March 6th in Otisville, New York. I want to bring in Cecilia Vega as well at, at the White House. Uh, Michael Cohen, in his statement to the judge, hitting directly uh, at, at President Trump, saying his only weakness was blind loyalty to the president. <laughs> And I'm struck, George, by just how much a part of this proceeding today President Trump actually was, even though clearly he was not there. And I will start by saying that we have not heard anything from President Trump. We are all monitoring his Twitter account very closely because I imagine it's just a matter of minutes before we do hear from him. In recent days, weeks, and months, the president has really tried to distance himself from Michael Cohen. And I have said this before, and I will say it again. It is impossible to overstate the closeness of their relationship here. We are talking about a man who was the right-hand man to President Trump, his longtime fixer, his personal attorney, someone who was in the innermost inner circle inside Trump Tower for Donald Trump. And to hear Michael Cohen slam President Trump, uh, to hear him talk about him, to, to point fingers directly at him today is frankly just astounding. Uh, you mentioned Michael Cohen talking about President Trump uh, saying, agreeing essentially that he is weak. Uh, and he says that his weakness was caused by blind loyalty to Donald Trump. And just a matter of days ago, President Trump had said that he called for a full and complete sentence of Michael Cohen. And really, it was just overnight in this new interview with Reuters that he distanced himself even from these charges. You'll remember, George, his story has really changed. The president's story has changed significantly and very dramatically in months. Initially, he said he didn't know anything about these hush payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. And then he said he found out about them after they were made. And then he tells Reuters just overnight that this wasn't a campaign contribution. If it were, it was only civil. He says uh, essentially that these, these sentencing report that was released on Friday cleared him of all culpability. Uh, that is not true so far. And, and, and we heard in court today that he is very much still a part of these allegations. Yeah. In fact, the prosecutors today said that these campaign finance uh, violations are serious because of the societal cost, George. So striking. The president has been laying out his legal defense in tweets. Want to go back to Pierre Thomas there outside uh, the courthouse. Pierre, that courtroom thick with emotion. <laughs> Cohen wept at least twice during these proceedings, uh, clearly overcome with emotions. Uh, he was uh, pretty silent, somber, as the judge read the sentence from what we we're being told by our colleagues inside the courtroom. And George, I guess the other thing to remember here is of all the people so far who've been charged in connection with the special counsel investigation or any of these federal cases, he's getting the longest sentence. And from someone who's covered many of these cases before, it's always sobering when you see a judge impose that sentence and you know that this person is going to sit in a prison for months and in this case, years. Yes, Pierre, that's very true. And it's also clear, Dan Abrams, uh, I don't know whether it's months or years, but these investigations are nowhere near over. Well, that's right. And we were talking about the possibility that this investigation would wrap up by the end of this year. That's clearly not going to happen. We already know that part of the Manafort case has been pushed into next year. There are other aspects of the case that have been pushed into next year. And again, when you hear the kind of language that they continue to use, and remember, there's so much that's been redacted in the documents we've already seen. Big black marks across it. Why? 
because there's more to come that they don't want to disclose yet, but they're continuing to investigate. Okay, Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Once again, Michael Cohen sentenced to 36 months in prison for tax evasion, tax fraud, and campaign violations, campaign finance violations, as he says, were directly ordered by President Trump. That sentence just handed down in federal courthouse in New York. We're going to go off the air right now. Our coverage will continue online, and of course, a full report tonight on World News Tonight with David Muir. Have a good afternoon. All right, thanks, George. Our con coverage continues here on ABC News Live now. Thank you so much for joining us on this breaking news uh, out of New York and the federal courthouse there, as George just said, to repeat. Uh, Michael Cohen, the president's longtime fixer and personal attorney, has now been sentenced to three years behind bars in federal prison, three years supervised release uh, on two separate cases, five charges. Michael Cohen pled guilty to tax evasion, bank fraud, campaign finance violations, uh, and lying to Congress. Uh, very emotional day as we heard Pierre Thomas talk about there. Uh, Michael Cohen pleading for leniency in the courthouse. I want to go to our David Wright uh, who is outside the courthouse there. David, um, it was emotional inside and we know that Michael Cohen had a big gathering of family there. He said that his uh, turning on President Trump was very much about protecting his family and getting back to them. That's right, Devin. He has said that uh, it's time for him to do the right thing, To that uh, he is sorry for uh, the mistakes that he has made uh, in connection with uh, uh, these various violations to which he pled guilty. Uh, but he said he was doing that. He was basically betraying the man he uh, was the most trusted fixer for for more than a dozen years because he had to put his family first. And Michael Cohen, as we heard, uh, wept in that courtroom today. This is a somber moment for him. He had asked for no jail time. The judge uh, showed some leniency, but did determine that this was serious enough to warrant at least three years in prison. Yeah, the judge noting that Michael Cohen did not fully cooperate with the investigators in the Southern District for those tax evasion and bank fraud crimes. He did cooperate, however, uh, extensively with the uh, Robert Mueller probe into President Trump. I want to bring in Cecilia Vega, our White House correspondent, into this. Cecilia, uh, the West Wing there, we know uh, from your sources, watching this with a little bit of unease, the president has had shifting explanations for what went down with those payments to Stormy Daniels, what he knew about them. Um, what are you hearing over there at this early hour? Any uh, pre buttle from the White House to what might have come out today and with respect to Michael Cohen? Well, so far, not yet, Devin, but I imagine it's really just a matter of time before we hear something uh, from the president himself, likely via tweet, as we usually do. Uh, you know, he has not been shy about, uh, frankly, bashing Michael Cohen publicly, and he's done it mu with much more, with increasingly regularity uh, and forcefulness in recent days as this sentencing proceeding drew closer. Uh, it was just a few days ago that the president called for a full and complete sentence, and we heard Michael Cohen reference that in court today, according to the reporters who were were inside that room. He slammed President Trump for trying to influence the proceedings, is what he said. Uh, and, and, and President Trump has, has shifted his tone. I mean, as David Wright was just saying, this it's hard to overstate how close Michael Cohen is. President Trump isn't someone who's got, got a large circle of, of people around him. He keeps a very tight inner circle, and Michael Cohen is perhaps, was perhaps the closest to him. This is a man who did his bid, bidding on everything, uh, in, in politics and business, and for more than a decade. This was his really his right-hand man, and now President Trump is calling him a liar, he is calling him a weak person, and he went publicly said that he should get a, a very long sentence and one of the things that struck me most, Devin, today was hearing Michael Cohen in that courtroom agreeing with Donald Trump that, and his characterization that he's weak. And he says that his weakness was because of blind loyalty to Donald Trump. We can't forget the big picture in all this. And the prosecutor said this as they were wrapping up today. This is a uh, they, they say that this that these these campaign finance charges caused a tremendous cost to society. We are talking about uh, essentially uh, people trying to, to tamper with an election months before an election came out. These were hush payments Michael Cohen just admitted to making uh, to try to influence an election. And in these documents, prosecutors are now pointing at Donald Trump as well. 
Yeah, Cecilia, Michael Cohen there in his comments to the court said to the American people, you deserve to know the truth, uh, and I was lying to you. It was unjust. Cecilia Vega at the White House, thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Pierre Thomas, who is also there in New York, been covering this case from the beginning. Pierre, uh, I was struck by Michael Cohen's attempt to uh, draw the president into this directly in his comments to the court. Michael Cohen said, uh, to a certain extent, he, he accepted responsibility for these acts, but very much blamed the president, saying, uh, Donald Trump caused him to follow the path of darkness to cover up his dirty deeds. Uh, in the end, though, uh, Pierre, the, the judge didn't seem to buy that very much. Well, Cohen made the president front and center part of these proceedings today. He talked about that he did these acts, the campaign finance violations, at the direction of the president of the United States. And he made it very personal. He said that he has been in mental incarceration since the day he met President Trump. Uh, a shot at the president, clearly. He talked about how the president had uh, called him a rat and tried to influence these proceedings. So again, very much making the president a part of these proceedings today. And the judge, however, said, this is your responsibility, Michael Cohen. You are an attorney. You are an officer of the court. You should know better and that these crimes that you committed were serious and therefore you are going to spend some time in prison. Yeah, Pierre Thomas, thank you so much. The judge did say there is a higher bar for attorneys. They should know better uh, in terms of lying to Congress. Uh, they should know the tax law. They should know uh, what bank fraud is and is not. And in this case, Michael Cohen willfully uh, broke the law and pleaded guilty to it. Uh, let's go back to our David Wright, who's also there in New York, been uh, tracking the case. David, um, g g what, if you, what are you hearing about how long uh, Michael Cohen could actually be behind bars here? And is there any chance? that he could uh, agree to cooperate further now that he's been sentenced? I don't know the answer to that second question, Devin, but in terms of the first question, we can expect that he will serve 85 percent. He can get 15 percent of the sentence reduced uh, because of good standing credits uh, uh, once he's behind bars. But the, the federal system is much more restrictive uh, than state systems tend to be in terms of granting early release. So it's expected that he will do a large part of that behind bars. It's also possible, however, that uh, he could be transferred to a halfway house and serve out some of his time uh, in a more relaxed, shall we say, setting than a federal <laughs> penitentiary. Uh, but he's looking at jail time, for sure. Serious jail time. And he did say, uh, David, that he was he was looking forward to getting this out of the way, uh, serving the time, moving on with his life. Lanny Davis telling George earlier that he plans to make part of his mission, uh, either from prison or after prison, going after President Trump. Uh, but these charges, I think, just to go back to the charges themselves, people may be confused. There are two sets of charges here, some involving just Michael Cohen and his conduct, some involving his conduct with the president, the Stormy Daniels payments. Uh, but the tax charges and bank fraud alone, th those are some pretty serious offenses. And the judge pointed out uh, the taxes are a critical element of keeping society functional. That's right. Tax evasion, bank fraud campaign finance fraud, basically, uh, paying out that money to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal uh, on the president's request uh, to uh, uh, basically influence the election and then lying to Congress. All of these are serious charges, but there was some frustration expressed by the Southern District of New York that uh, there may be other crimes that uh, Michael Cohen either participated in or knows about, uh, but he wasn't completely forthcoming with them. Some frustration uh, with that from the Southern District, and that's why they recommended the stiffest possible jail sentence. Uh, and what's not clear to me, and maybe some of our other guests may know the answer to this, is what happens if those other crimes uh, or alleged crimes are exposed now? Is there a potential, not just that the sentence could be reduced, but that it could be added to uh, and that the leverage is still strong? I don't know. Yeah, he's very much still in the Michael investigative Michael walking out now right I, here. Yeah, and... Uh... David, just tell I'm us. I'm told that Michael Cohen is walking out now. We should keep an eye out for that. Yeah, we 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 have we hear you, David, and we Family do have live picture. Out. We do have live picture of the of that door right now. But David, paint a picture for us. Give us the the scene there. How many reporters? Family. What what is it like outside there? 
It's a, you know, it's a chilly day here in New York. Uh, this is a federal courthouse, so no cameras allowed inside. Uh, only a few reporters uh, working for wire services were even allowed to have cell phones inside. But camped out outside here, you've got more than 300 reporters uh, from around the country and from around the world. Earlier, uh, I ran into a, a correspondent for Turkish television that I know. Mm -hmm. So even the Turks are watching this. Uh, and right now, uh, the family members and the lawyers uh, are coming up to some microphones phones that have been set up outside uh, the courthouse, they'll presumably be making short statements uh, about today's events and what they mean uh, to the family members. Uh, but this is uh, a, a big day for Michael Cohen's family. A lot of them turned out in that courtroom to show support. And we're told that inside the courtroom, at several points in the proceeding, he broke down in tears. Yeah, very emotional day for Michael Cohen and his family. We understand uh, that his mother, father, in-laws, his wife, two children, a cousin, a niece were also uh, in that courtroom. And uh, if you're just joining us, watching live pictures here, David Wright outside the courtroom. Here comes Michael Cohen right now. We'll see if he comes up to, uh, to address reporters. Looks to be getting uh, in his vehicle with his legal team uh, after just being sentenced three years plus three years supervised release uh, for his crimes, uh, federal offenses there, and you see his vehicle moving away, David. That's right. He's uh, just pulling away right now. No comment to the many reporters uh, waiting outside here. Uh, you know, Michael Cohen uh, uh, really approached this day with a sense of, uh, of solemnity. Uh, this was a serious moment for him and for his family, and he had asked for no jail time. Uh, the judge unwilling to accept that. Three years will be his sentence. He'll serve most of it. Yeah, he did say, uh, to your point, David, today is the day I get my freedom back. He said that he is, uh, had been living in personal and mental incarceration. He was uh, free now, taking full responsibility for his guilty plea on these crimes uh, and is now uh, returning home, not remanded into custody today. Uh, we'll wait, have to wait and see when he will have to surrender himself uh, to begin serving that three-year period of time. This is, this is uh, the second of, of uh, President Trump closest advisors to be caught up in this uh, investigation, to be charged and serving uh, jail time now. Of course, Paul Manafort, the uh, president's former campaign chairman, also currently behind bars, uh, going through legal challenges. Uh, the judge today sought to create, or Cohen's team today, sought to draw a contrast between Michael Cohen uh, and Paul Manafort, noting that unlike Paul Manafort, who offered to cooperate and then did what, in his words, were double dealing. Michael Cohen, they said, uh, was cooperative with the special counsel. The special counsel agreed with that. Uh, but again, as David Wright was just reporting there, the judge noted at the end of the day, he was not fully forthcoming uh, on those crimes of uh, tax evasion, bank fraud, campaign finance violations, serious offenses uh, that could simply not be, uh, not be uh, condoned at this time. We're joined by our legal analyst, Dan, Dan Abrams. Uh, Dan, great to have you here. One of the questions we've been talking about is, uh, you know, whether or not Michael Cohen can reduce his sentence by now choosing to cooperate with the Southern District. Is there any precedent for that? Yeah, there, there is precedent. Uh, it is always possible he could decide uh, to shift gears and uh, cooperate more than he already has cooperated. The uh, Southern District prosecutors have made it clear in their paperwork that they don't think that he has cooperated enough. They believe that he still isn't telling the whole truth about uh, certain things, about when things happened and did he turn over documents, et cetera. So the document and the argument from the Southern District of New York is, yeah, he's been helpful to the special counsel. He's been sort of helpful to us. But much of what he said to us um, has not been enough. Some of it hasn't been true. And as a result, uh, they don't believe that based on what has happened thus far, that he's entitled to a significant departure down. But if he were to decide uh, that uh, he's going to cooperate a, a lot more, that, that could certainly change things. And, and, Dan, I want to pick up on where you left off with George Stephanopoulos earlier in the conversation about uh, something that stuck out to you, the special counsel's attorney telling the judge uh, that Michael Cohen offered some valuable information regarding links between the Trump campaign 
and foreign governments. That was a very striking statement. What sorts of things could he have been privy to and now shared with the Robert Mueller probe, do you think? Right. He said any links between a campaign and a foreign government, meaning we're not saying that there are links, but if there are, he's provided substantial, he's provided credible and valuable information about it. Look, if he's providing credible and valuable information about any links between a campaign and a foreign government, that sure seems to mean that there are links that they believe exist. So that's a pretty big statement. Now, with that said, uh, you could say that there have already uh, been uh, public uh, disclosures which have made it clear that uh, there were um, conversations, et cetera, but the word links is a is a is a is a loaded word and the fact that they're saying links says to me that this investigation is certainly moving forward and if you are the trump team you've got to be very concerned about that language yeah and especially as we know that robert Mueller's team has been zeroing in on that moscow trump tower deal that michael cohen was such a central figure in uh one would imagine that 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 whole episode here uh was part of that conversation I want to bring pierre thomas uh back into this pierre um you know you've been you've been following this case with michael cohen from some time um, what's your sense of, of, of how this example could weigh on some of the other subjects that Robert Mueller has been pressuring, trying to deal with? Do you think that the sentence here will have a deterrent effect, a compelling effect, as the judge talked about today, on any of those other witnesses? Well, one of the things you're seeing is that when you cooperate, the special counsel and the federal prosecutors are, are lenient. Uh, in the case of Michael Flynn, you saw the special counsel's office go into the court and say he should get basically no jail time. But in this case, where you see a lack of cooperation, at least the perception of, that's the perception that the Southern District has, that there's been a lack of cooperation, they're saying you should have meaningful jail time. And make no mistake, three years uh, prison time sends a message to all those people who are not cooperating that they probably should do so. A smorgasbord of crimes, as the judge put it today, William Pauley of the U.S. District uh, Court there in Manhattan. Our, our Aaron Katursky is with David Wright. He was inside the courtroom uh, for the proceedings today. Aaron, great to see you. David, uh, you're there with him as well. Give us some color from the inside. And I got to say, I, I saw on Twitter beforehand, Aaron, that Michael Avenatti, Stormy Daniels' attorney, was also sit sitting in the back. Uh, Aaron's unable to hear you, so I will pass on that remark and uh, and and ask him to carry on. Uh, he's asking Michael Avenatti was in there, set the scene for us inside that room. What was the move? Michael Avenatti was a surprise appearance, having no business before the court ended up walking in to see the proceedings against Michael Cohen. And it was a tense room. Remember, this is the defendant associated with the Russia investigation whose crimes may cut closest to President Trump. And so there was a great deal of interest from court spectators in addition to reporters about what would happen to Cohen and as he pleaded for some degree of leniency the judge also made clear that these were serious crimes and that there needed to be a deterrent in particular the judge said as a lawyer Michael Cohen should have known better he should have known that evading taxes undermines American democracy he should have known that committing a campaign finance violation undermines American democracy and Cohen uh, apologized to the American people. He said they deserve to know the truth, and he let them down. What uh, was his reaction when the sentence came down? Michael Cohen stood impassively as the judge sentenced him to three years of prison time plus another three years of supervised release. He'll have to report uh, in March of next year. And, and I was struck, too, by something that, that Cohen said. He was, it turns, somber. Uh, he, at one point, uh, caught, his voice caught, and he became emotional as he turned toward his parents in the spectator seats to say that he was sorry for his conduct. But he was also defiant, and he said of President Trump, the man he once said he'd take a bullet for, that there was little to be admired. Very briefly, do you have a sense as to why he didn't talk to the cameras on the way out? He made a specific point in court, David, uh, of saying that he wanted to, to not enter a formal cooperation agreement with the feds because he didn't want to put his family in a prolonged spotlight. And so he may have 
been able to skip talking to all the reporters in that light. He just wants to get on with reinventing his life. ABC's Aaron Katursky who is inside that courtroom uh, giving us the scene there. Back to you, Devin. All right, David, and our Aaron Katursky, thank you so much. And David, if I can pick up with you, uh, just as we wrap up here, you know, one of the aspects of this conversation uh, over the past few weeks that we have had is uh, whether the president could use his pardon power to sort of uh, provide leniency to some of those who have been caught up in these investigations, former campaign aides, former fixers. Michael Cohen is someone who was once one of the fierce fiercest loyalist to President Trump, but David, uh, it does not appear here that he would be someone uh, on a list to get a pardon. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Well, if you uh, uh, sort of read between the lines on the various tweets from the president, it does not seem to be uh, that he's on the nice list, put it that way, given the time of year that it is. Uh, President Trump uh, has been wailing on uh, Michael Cohen, calling him uh, everything from uh, weak to uh, uh, basically showing that his disgust with uh, Michael Cohen's cooperation in sharp contrast uh, to the tweets that the president has been giving about folks like Paul Manafort, who he's held up almost as a hero. Uh, that said, you know, when it comes to pardons, we've heard over the weekend uh, some concern raised by Republicans, among them Marco Rubio, senator from Florida, uh, who said that if the president were to exercise his pardon power in connection with people who are presumably in a position to implicate him, that would raise eyebrows even among Republicans, and it might prompt Congress to uh, address the question of presidential pardons and uh, amend the presidential pardons, something that would require a constitutional amendment. So many incredible angles to this story. David Wright, thanks so much for your reporting uh, out there in the chilly uh, winter weather out there outside the federal courthouse in Manhattan. David, thank you very much. Uh, the pardons, just one aspect of this. It's a personal tragedy uh, here for Michael Cohen and his family, a lost relationship with President Trump, something that now a federal crime that has implicated President Trump, an unindicted co-conspirator in effect here, uh, potentially as investigators continue to look at the president's ties with Russia. Michael Cohen today. Uh, allegedly giving more information about those links, about those ties to special counsel Robert Mueller, uh, as he is now sentenced to three years in prison, 36 uh, months, three years also supervised reliefs. Uh, our uh, Lauren Pearl, who was inside the courtroom, just reporting out that as that sentence was read, uh, he was seen uh, weeping, hugging his family and friends there, wiping away tears. Uh, his daughter, who was using a cane, was also loudly weeping, clearly an impact uh, on on that family, but Judge William Pauley today saying a deterrent was amplified in this case. There was a need for one. Uh, as a lawyer, Michael Cohen should have known that his crimes of tax evasion, campaign finance violations, and lying, uh, all of which to which he pled guilty, uh, needed to be punished and that a significant jail time was justified. Uh, and today he did get just that. As Aaron Kotursky reported, Michael Cohen, the president's former personal attorney, uh, will begin serving that time uh, in March. Our thanks to our entire team, Pierre Thomas, Cecilia Vega, David Wright out there, Aaron Katursky, Dan Abrams, our legal analyst, the whole team at ABC News here will continue reporting on this story today. Uh, for World News Tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., re replayed here on ABC News Live. And, of course, you can follow more on this story by downloading the ABC News app. Star this story. You'll get those updates on your phone. And I'll be right back here at 3.30 Eastern today for the briefing room for more analysis, more coverage of this breaking news story today. Michael Cohen, the president's attorney, sentenced to three years in prison for his crimes. I'm Devin Dwyer in D.C. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.